uh, I think we can start. Um, people might still come in, but I think it's more or less um, everyone here. So, yeah, I'd like to welcome uh, Jörg Meyer-Ries, who is uh, the head of division at the Federal Ministry for Environment, Nature Conservation, Building and Nuclear Safety, which is the Environment Ministry in Germany at the moment. They are always grouped a little bit different, depending on who is, uh, what the government is like. Uh, and uh, he uh, is responsible for the sustainable strategy at the ministry, ministry and he will be telling you in much more detail what he w is doing and has doing. Um, but I think what is really, really the most important thing for us is that he is uh, from the policy side and really working on how to optimize science policy dialogue, science policy interaction, how to use scientific ideas, scientific concepts in a ministerial context and in a governmental context, which um, we think a lot about from the other side, from the scientific side, but actually having someone who can, yeah, who can tell how, what it's like from the other side will be, will be really interesting. And so, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yes, hello, welcome. Thank you for the invitation and for the nice introduction. Um, yeah, uh, I will speak mainly on the uh, implementation of the of the sustainability strategy going on at the moment. And uh, as Frederike always um, already mentioned, we can perhaps in the dis debate go a bit deeper in this kind of uh, issue, of, but also in the science policy thing which I don't can report so much. Um, all what I say today is not the official ministry speech. I'm, uh, of course, a lot of things are just facts, but um, so I speak as, as a person, as a private person at the moment, but um, I have a lot of uh, sheets coming from the, from the official uh, publications and so on and so forth. If you are interested in the strategy later on, I have some English versions about there and about the environmental program we have uh, published one year ago, but uh, this is all available also on the internet. But just to make my luggage a little bit uh, more lighter, it would be nice to take just these things away, and they are in English, so nice to read. So, um, well, uh, what will I talk about? Um, I would like to do five uh, things. First, talking about sustainability, I'm, I'm not aware how much you deal with this concept in your studies and so on and so forth, so I will go a little bit into the, the concept of sustainability, how it is seen from the German ministerial side at the moment, uh, so not too much about uh, the history. Then I would like to go into the Agenda 2030, which is the political version of sustainability and the sustainable development, which is at least I think for every country at the moment is a very relevant policy uh, document. Um, and then I would like to go, this is the main part I think, uh, into what, what is German policy at the moment doing in implementing these uh, Agenda 2030 or the Sustainable Development. Um, in a fourth chapter I would like to speak about the mini environmental ministry's <coughs> part in that, in, in the sense of taking up this Agenda 2030 and, and uh, having produced a program until 2030 about all what's going on in environmental policy, because I thought this might be interesting for you here in the uh, ECI. And at the last point, well, we, I would touch the point about science policy, also one project which has just uh, has started this year, a uh, scientific platform in Germany about uh, on, on sustainability. So these are the five chapters, hopefully I got through in not too many uh, times so that we have time to discuss. Perhaps uh, very quick to my background. Uh, originally I studied economics, political economy uh, at the end in, at the University of Oldenburg. You might not know in the northern Germany part uh, in, the, in the 80s. Then I s was lecturer over there uh, until uh, about the beginning of the 90s. I went to a so-called uh, Academy of the um, Lutheran Church in Germany, which makes uh, international and national conferences um, in a way of societal discourse and political education. Then I switched to a private consulting company for eight years, consulting companies and ministries and public bodies. 
um, about communication organization problems. And then I went to the ministry, oh, this is missing right now. Uh, since 10 years I'm working in this building, or at least since 10 years in this building, uh, in Potsdam, in uh, Berlin, at the Potsdamer Platz, right in the center of Berlin, uh, in the division on general fundamental aspects of environmental policy and long-term planning and sustainability. And for this year, I'm seconded to the Institute of Advanced Sustainability Studies in Potsdam, which is near to Berlin, for reflecting about science policy dialogue, reflecting about the future of environmental policy. So that's my way. So you see it's a very uh, uh, switching way of life between uh, uh, public policy, science, and uh, even um, private, um, private part of economy. So about sustainability. Um, I think uh, sustainability is now s to be seen in, in the big discourse of um, uh, planetary boundaries. You may have heard by uh, Kate Rivers' uh, lecture here. Uh, we were taking up that. So this is the uh, great acceleration since the 50s, 40s, 50s in the last century, shifting totally the metabolism between uh, humankind and, and nature. And um, this makes the sustainability idea, I think, very strong and, and pol uh, politically relevant. Then we have this transformation discourse about transformation understand, understood as a radical <coughs> structural change. Um, the Agenda 2030 is called a transformative agenda. So it's taking up these, these words in the policy arena. Of course, uh, sustainability is just a, a wishful thinking about transformation. We have real transformations. The main, I think the main one in the 21st century will be the digitalization, uh, which, will sh which will change, I think, everything. Um, not only the environment, but also labor, de democracy, and all these things. So we have to see that as the context for sustainability. And of course, we have other trends, uh, transformations at the moment uh, about nationalism, regionalism. This could be just taken as one of the big ones. Uh, we are seen from the German policy with some uh, yeah, uh, negative feelings, I would say. Uh, the Anthropocene is also a concept uh, which is related, I think, meanwhile to uh, sustainability. Uh, this shift of the metabolism um, leads to perhaps a new so-called, scientifically so-called new epoch. Um, and I think the only vision around these trends and facts and developments uh, at the moment relevant, I think, or we think, is sustainability. This is, this is not about trends, this is about where to go. Uh, uh, this is more about orientation. Um, Seen the history from a German perspective, of course, uh, the main thinker of sustainability was uh, Karl von Karlowitz. I don't know whether you know this name. He was um, a Saxonian um, uh, official guy in the in the mining industry, and he was uh, he was um, a little bit frustrated about the uh, downscaling and the the, destroy, the the destruction of all forests in Saxonia which make, make up the, the wood you have to burn for getting mining uh, industry running. So he was thinking about the sustainability idea to not to use more capital than is, um, um, how you say that, reaccumulated in the same period. So don't to cut down forests more than trees are growing in the same period you use them. So this is the old kind of, of seeing sustainability um, as an economic principle, but a very, in, in nowadays perspective, I would say in a very narrow sense. Uh, it's let's, more or less it's a pure economical concept and it's, uh, Karlowitz was not interested in the ecological system. He was interested in the timber coming out of the forest and this was his concern. So I think totally a new version has to be dealt today and it makes no sense always to um, draw back to the forest economy. I think today we, the main sustainability concepts are around um, what we call the UN agenda and the SDG co uh, goals. There's a lot of conceptual thinking into this political concept. And this is more a political leading principle, not an economic one. Uh, 
from the environmental ministry's view of point, we often get the observation, well, uh, sustainability is something only about environment. Uh, this was never the case, and I think this is wrong. Um, but um, the main thing, in our view, is that it is more about systemic thinking or integration. This concerns uh, the different sectors and disciplines you have, the different time scales you have to bind together to make short-term and long-term policy in a consistent way, to look for uh, the different policy fields you have to integrate uh, at the same time and find uh, compromises and alliances. You have to think about spatial integration, you have to do something at the local and at the same time for the global um, level. And uh, this is more or less my view and our view on sustainability as a, as a more governance and uh, yeah, conceptual frame for making policy. So responsibility, ethics, precautionary principle, well-known in environmental policy, all these things are part of sustainability, systems, risk, awareness, um, and at the end, what we call uh, environmental transformative policy. Um, so, as I said, I think sustainability policy has to be seen and sustainability as a governance issue. Um, and um, a lot of these terms I already used. I think it has also to do with transparency, with democratic way of seeing the different effects, talking about the different effects a policy or some action has and to find some balances out of that. So it has to be inclusive. It has also including not all not only all actors in society besides policy, besides government, it has also to include, of course, poor people, social, the social question of sustainability is one of the most uh, interesting and raising, uh, rising one at the moment because uh, we have to shift away from purely ecological uh, thinking in environmental policy. So, coming to the Second part, hopefully I don't speak too quick or too, too much German English, too difficult to understand. Um, the UN agenda. Um, the UN agenda has an has a old history. A lot of people say, well, this is the follow-up of the MDGs in 2002, the Mill Millennium Development Goals. But in, in my perspective, in the perspective also of a lot of sustainability people in Germany, it's rooted back to the Brundtland report and to the 1992 Rio Conference on Sustainability uh, because uh, it's not only a development agenda, it's uh, in, the, in the sense of development policy, it's really agenda on environment, development, economic, democratic agenda and whatever um, developments you have to take in. And so um, I would say that uh, the Agenda 2030, uh, which was, um, which was um, decided upon in 2015, is not only an environmental agenda or a development agenda, it's the agenda for the human society because nearly all nations subscribed it and uh, said this is, this is the set of our societal goals in a whole. Of course, it's, there are deficits and there are trade-offs, but this is a uh, the, the result of a negotiation which, uh, which lasted two years between all nations, between all stakeholders. Um, and in so far, I would take it as a global future contract and not just another UN paper besides um, uh, climate negotiations or biodiversity negotiations or, uh, or papers and laws and standards in other fields. So it, and the second thing which is important to see uh, I don't know in how far you dealt already with the agenda. Often the agenda is identified with the 17 goals. And the 17 goals are of course the most prominent part of it. But the agenda has two other very relevant parts. The one is the visions and principles making the introduction of the whole agenda. But this is, um, for politicians, this is very relevant uh, language over there because uh, the, there are lead principles you can rely upon and they make up more or less the, the, the mode of thinking of this paper, uh, which you don't find in the, in the goals themselves. And the third part of it, besides then the goals, is then the monitoring and the reporting scheme. And because the agenda, of course, is not something uh, which you can um, 
uh, deal like with the international law. It's just a very soft instrument. Uh, but this monitoring and reporting schemes produces a lot of dynamic in the international di diplomacy. And uh, whole governments are working now on their reporting every four or five years to the UN uh, bodies. And uh, this is the relevant, uh, a very relevant part besides the goals themselves. So, coming to this first part, uh, the, the philosophy, I think three leading principles are the most relevant in that. This is leave no one behind, which is meant on a global scale, leaving not developing countries or uh, poor people somewhere in the world behind this uh, agenda. It's meant for all of them. Then transformational. It's really uh, in, in its in its title. It said that is that's about structural change in the world, and it's universal. That means this is hitting or mean is, is meaningful for every country, especially of course for industrialized countries. This was a very conflictive part of the negotiations, and this is the big difference uh, to the agendas before, to, especially to the 1992. <coughs> um, uh, negotiations in Rio uh, and so far in Germany you find uh, people who say well now we are a developing country again yeah, we have to develop we are developing as, as others in Africa or Asia so um, this is about the thinking that we have all to be acti or acting responsible in the in the next uh, 13 years let's say and the leading goals is also I think an interesting set taking together a lot of scientific debates, a lot of societal debates, not completely new, of course not, but concerning putting people in the, in the center of policy, uh, putting the planet, it was not possible to take the planet boundaries into the text, but there's a lot of language concerning the planet in the agenda. This is more or less the ecological uh, dimension in it. Then peace. It's uh, really an agenda takes up a lot of UN debates and relevant uh, conflicts uh, about peace in, in a global sense. Uh, and um, the other two are prosperity as another term for wealth and welfare, but a more broad concept, a non-material concept also. And partnership, which is one of the guiding lines, of course, of the whole agenda partnership within countries, partnership between countries, partnership between different parts of the, of the globe. This is the first, the principal part. The SDGs part is the 17 goals, which have their own logo, logo for every uh, goal. I can't go into these um, single goals, but um, this is, if you go now to, if, if you are entering, for example, the UN building in New York, uh, these whole uh, symbols are totally structuring the building. Meanwhile, you find these symbols at every door. Who, which department is dealing with which goal? This is uh, somehow uh, the, the business plan for the UN. And this is also relevant for international relations, completely apart from sustainability dialogue. That the UN has a lot of has a lot of internal crisis, and the SDGs could be something like a. Uh, a, a, a new link up for all these different uh, debates and organizations within the UN. So I think this is uh, even organizationally for the UN a very relevant um, idea. Uh, you have a lot of synergies and trade-offs between these goals, but this is this is not something which you can criticize from a scientific or, or logical point of view, because I think this is just the outcome of a negotiations would have to take out all policy fields in the world in one document. I mean, um, this is um, difficult to do. And of course, between growth and environmental goals, there is still this trade-off in this document. Um, and um, But at the same time, uh, these goals are formulated in a way that in every nation, in every state, you can uh, use them. Um, they are is representing most of the political goals in societies, they are uh, mostly quantified to, for 2030, which is, um, in my view, in our uh, view and experience, this makes some sense to, to a certain uh, degree, uh, so that you can measure political efforts and successes. Um, 
this is a big discussion, of course, uh, between uh, around evidence-based policy. But I think this is helpful uh, for an international debate um, because it urges the different nations really to, to report about their specific um, things they do and the success they do have. And so you can compare and, and um, collect the data worldwide to see what's going on. So as I said, it's somehow a business plan for the UN. Somehow this is also uh, true for um, institutions. Uh, more, and more and more, not many, but more and more institutions are using this SDG frame as structuring their own plans uh, and strategic uh, options for the future. Even some companies are arranging their product portfolio and their assessment around the 17 goals. So this is something interesting going on because this brings then these different stakeholders together at one table uh, and, and uh, um, fosters the communication. So concerning the monitoring, we have a high-level forum uh, uh, in New York at the UN. Every four years, the heads of states meet there. Normally, it meet there in the ministries or secretaries of state to to hear about the reporting of different states. I think in, in 2018 there will be about 50 states reporting. Um, and um, you have different systems of global reporting, national reporting, or regional, regional in the sense of the UN, so uh, Eastern Europe or um, Africa or whatever. Um, and you have a long list of indicators which are still in development because they are big problems in finding for these 17 goals uh, always a set of indicators which is uh, makes from the substance ma makes sense which is measurable even in countries which have very low statistical resources uh, and which somehow are comparable uh, between the countries so you have even some very silly indicators for example still the, the indicator for sustainable tourism is uh, the percentage of tourism in, in the national product of this country. So this is, has nothing to do with sustainability, but it's the only, uh, until now, the only number they could find for tourism. So, um, and the most political debate somehow is going on about this monitoring. So this is really a fight in different um, uh, directions. Uh, we can talk about that. So, the implementation of this agenda is, of course, a, a huge challenge because there are very difficult questions to solve if you, if you take that in a serious manner, if you don't just report what you reported ever before. So, uh, to interpret these five Ps, for example, uh, planetary policy, how, what is the planetary effect of our national policy? This is a, a real difficult thing for uh, governments and for national states. Um, what means transformation? I mean, this is, it's somehow very astonishing that this term could find its way up to the UN level of political texts. But if you talk to people, well, we should now transform, everybody says, uh, well, everybody can change and transform, but not me. Uh, tr transformation is something very difficult for individuals and even more for governments. So what does that mean, transformation, if it's not just a, a normal reform in the next 15 years? Uh, then the approach or the idea of whole of government and whole of society, uh, it's still, of course, uh, that sustainability, even in, in Germany, which has a long tradition and a strong communication campaign on that, even in Germany, it's, it's a minor, it's a, it's a concrete minority in Germany who is dealing with this concept, who, is no, who knows about the Agenda 2030. If I go to universities, if I go to different stakeholders, they've never heard of that Agenda 2030, even two years after it. Uh, or perhaps it's even too late now. You know, if they don't know it after some months, when it's in the papers and the newspapers, the chance is gone. So this is a problem also in the other ministries and even in my ministry, not everybody knows about the agenda. Not everybody knows about sustainable development. And um, um, I know that in the UK the situation is not, not something else. So I think uh, this is a big problem. 
And um, as I said, with sustainability as a governance issue, it's of course then that to how to change governance, how to change a government seeing risky problems, systemic risk, complex problems. This is a big, this is a big issue. Um, so showing that just in one aspect, um, if you look at the planetary idea, this is mainly uh, the idea, th the physical dimension of what is going on in policy. This is something different from universal universality, what means that nations have to take over responsibility, which is not only planetary, but also, and this is the third term, global. And global means more the international relationship. So if you want to introduce planetary policy, universality and global policy into one normal national policy um, uh, development, this really has uh, a transformational effect. So this is, I think, meant, for example, by transformation. So um, coming to the last, uh, to the third part um, about the German uh, implementation. Uh, the one thing is, of course, that our new sustainability development strategy, which we do have since uh, beginning of last year, um, no, beginning of this year. Was the, is the 2016 strategy published uh, beginning of uh, 2017. Um, this is mainly uh, following the structure of the UN, um, the UN text, which you find on the left side. The right side is the German sustainability strategy, which I have here. But um, one has to see that we mainly influenced, of course, by German policy, by alliances with other European countries and by the EU in, in a whole, also the UN debate. So for example, the structuring, the restructuring of the 17 goals along these five P's is a little bit a, let's say a central European idea. I think uh, Germany played a, a role in that because it was clear that 17 goals are very difficult to communicate because a lot of politicians will say, well, that's too much, 17 goals, what's, what's that? <laughs> um, so we had a lot of influence into this agenda. So this is the first thing to say. Um, then we decided uh, to took it as an essential frame. So the agenda was taken as um, the leading structure and we said we have already an existing sustainability strategy and we will take over this UN debate by this national strategy. So not making up a new thing. Uh, or not taking it to the environmental ministry, or not taking it to somewhere else, or to the, for the foreign ministry was very interested in Germany to take over. Uh, so we said, no, um, we have already a strategy and we'll try to reshape it along the UN Agenda 2030. So we started our sustainability strategy in 2002 and producing every four years something like a progress report and reporting every two years with statistics upon our success. So we didn't, we didn't want to throw it away but this was also um, a long debate within, between the ministries how to deal with that. Uh, in Germany, the Chancellor's office, and this Merkel's office, is responsibility, responsible for the strategy. This is the only strategy of the Chancellery. All the other strategies are dealt with in different ministries. So this is the overarching strategy. Um, and since 2002, it's, it's comprising all these different fields uh, and also in the different federal states, in Germany called Länder, we have, not in all of them, we have such sustainability strategies and we also, some of our cities have that. Even since the 1992 um, uh, local agenda was published um, in, from in Rio. And so this was our basis to take it uh, but as I said, we had the problem now to how to interpret in a political compromise between all these ministries, what, what does these five P's mean in, in German language and German policy. Then we decided that we should restructure our whole indicator set and the whole structure of the strategy along these 17 goals, uh, which is not easy, but we wanted to report to the EU and to the UN in this structure. Um, 
And the most central point was that we said, well, uh, the, the real new challenge by the UN agenda is that we have to report more intensively and more robust about the international effects of German policy. So what we do have are goals and indicators for what is happening with the national policy in the national space. And we also know what is happening if we uh, do some more on development policy, money, throwing money on development policy, what is happening then in third world countries or other countries. But what we don't have noticed up to now in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sufficient way is what is the effect of German normal life on the international society. And this is this, um, what I talked before, this global planetary and international thinking in the agenda, which is very difficult. Um, and also, which we, we had even before, but strengthening the idea of this whole of government, whole of society, leaving no one behind idea. Uh, I think I have to hurry up a little bit, yeah? It's okay? <coughs> uh, about the principles and integrating them, this helped us as environmental ministry a lot that we had the agenda because this planetary language in the agenda helped us to come through with the idea of that there are planetary boundaries and that there are, that there is a, a let's say a boundary or a, a condition for every policy which is called um, basic conditions or, or a dignity for everybody. So these two dimensions putting in as, as boundaries or as uh, preconditions for every policy was not possible before. So uh, we had some uh, things in this direction, but by, by a planetary boundaries debate and even the, the idea of, I think, uh, the, the social boundaries and by this agenda, we could um, convince other ministries about this boundary talk, which is difficult not only for some of you and some other people in the world, I think, but it's also difficult for, it was very difficult in the 2013 negotiation with, for example, Asian countries saying, well, we have, there are boundaries and now we would like to respect them and they say well you never respected them in the last 200 300 years now we shall suddenly respect boundaries we believe in techni technical uh, progress and what whatever uh, in germany we convinced others other ministries to take that in this is on this principle uh, interesting um, development second thing as i said we restructured our whole management and monitoring system. We had about 35 indicators representing 20 goals in our strategy since 2002. Now we said, well, we need more, uh, less goals, less overarching goals, but we need more indicators to meet this idea of the UN. For every goal, there should be two or three indicators. So we restructured that and um, uh, not not throwing away our indicators, but a lot of them kept their place and others we tried to invent further on. And also there we had a lot of problems in the last years, for example, to find an indicator for sustainable consumption. And we always had fights with the economic ministry and with the um, consumers, uh, ministry, consumer and uh, consumer behavior ministry. And then by this pressure, by the agenda, we got through with, of course, some indicator which is not robust for the rest of, of our lives and he is not the, the best you can have but the only thing we could find uh, which was um, which was available where, where we had data and where we also could define a target this is very relevant in the German uh, we have we have really concrete targets for every of these uh, indicators until 2020 and now until 2030 uh, all reported by the Federal Statistical Office we use the European um, symbols of the Euro of Eurostat um, concerning how, what is the success of the policy at the moment uh, with these uh, four symbols um, signaling well um, the right direction and the achievement or the complete wrong direction. And I can't go into details of different indicators. I show you, show you just one as an example. For example, we had always 
in the last 15 years uh, an indicator measuring the nitrogen input into soil uh, per hectare of land and Germany has a very bad nitrogen uh, situation uh, and as you can see about the, uh, over the last 20 years we have only a slight very slight uh, going down of the of the um, development and our goal was always uh, this is this last um, number um, about 70 kilogram per hectare land nitrogen input uh, this is too high if you look on planetary boundaries calculations it should be the half of it but this is not negotiable uh, with others so we have this goal and we still not are on the way to reaching it because we are more moving in a horizontal way so therefore you have the symbol of a, of a black cloud so we are too slow and this is now put in the SDG2 now hunger context because we don't we don't have hunger in Germany mainly uh, there are some very poor children and families who you could put in this uh, in category but normally you would not speak of hunger in Germany but we produce the food in Germany in a non-sustainable way so this is not the solution for having no hunger anymore so we should change that and we are producing food for countries who could uh, produce their own food and are destroying sometimes markets with that so you know about that I think in your uh, food uh, um, um, research I, I switched that. Uh, we have a very differentiated governance structure for sustainability. Uh, as you can't read it, I, I can't go into detail, but uh, we try to intensify this structure and are on the way to intensifying it uh, with the Agenda 2030. We have this, uh, as, as the Chancellor's Office is the head of the strategy, we have a, a committee concerning uh, uh, all state secretaries called sometimes the green cabinet of Germany and this is deciding about the big issues of the sustainability strategy and we try to involve them more um, after we have now the the 2030 uh, framework we are working on the international level we are helping other countries in their statistics there are uh, alliances between different countries reporting to the UN we are under we are uh, supporting that uh, I'm so, uh, myself I'm a member of the um, ESDN uh, network which is the network of all ministries pu public uh, officials dealing with sustainability and we meet in regular uh, exchange as a pity UK is not anymore really re re uh, presented in this uh, network uh, hopefully this will be changeable <coughs> And we have not only the government and the policy, we have private companies dealing with the sustainable development goals. We have a new initiative in the chemistry industry called Chemistry uh, Chemistry High 3. Or high <laughs> uh, I can't only mention things. Cities, we have a lot of cities, as also I think in the UK, a lot of cities are on the way to sustainable development and we have a new monitoring system which will uh, be established in uh, beginning next year hopefully comprising nearly all German cities in a set of sustainability indicators the NGOs are uh, by this agenda more critical and more aware of governmental policy writing shadow reports and so on and so forth which is helpful at least for us as, as more uh, ambitious uh, ministry in this whole thing so this is at the end I think all helping to to foster uh, some cohesion between different policies so very shortly I would like to tell you just a few words about a program which uh, my division wrote in the last four years um, and which was um, decided upon by our ministry but it's not a cabinet decision it's it's so it's only a ministerial document about environmental policy for the next 15 or 13 years meanwhile uh, which is interesting to mention here I think because it takes a lot up of the same ideas as the agenda 2030 planetary boundaries we could take up of course very uh, um, explicitly um, 
We talk about the safe operating space as, as frame for uh, environmental policy. We talk about the Anthropocene. Uh, we took up the environmental action program of the EU saying, well, uh, the main end of environmental policy as of economic policy is not a fine environment or 2% uh, uh, of growth every year, but it's the living well for all. So this is uh, uh, more talking uh, in a social societal uh, mode of, of polit political goals. And we draw a lot of um, attention to the, to the fact that even in our, I would say, relatively good environmental policy in Germany, we are not looking intensive enough on the international effects. So, for example, in the sustainability strategy, we have a resource efficiency goal. And if you look only on the national numbers, you will see that the resource efficiency in, in Germany is developing in a great way. We produce, meanwhile, with a half of the resources what we produced 20 years or 10 years ago. So, wonderful resource efficiency. But if you look at the same development in an international perspective, you see that we uh, shifted our whole resource um, uh, efficiency uh, by, by um, uh, shifting the, the burdens to other countries because we are tra as extracting the resources now in Asia, in Africa and somewhere else with huge environmental effects. And if you look at these numbers, which are often difficult to get, you see that the resource efficiency of Germany is not so well. It's, it's, it's even, uh, it's not declining, but it's, uh, in, uh, it's declining, but it's not a very good success. It's uh, uh, just 10% of the national, let's say, uh, success. Um, so we have to minimize our environmental effects. This is a main issue in this environmental program. And um, we have to see environmental policy much more as a societal policy, which means not only a social policy, which means that our energy term policy, for example, should be affordable for, uh, for poor households, uh, but it's also meant as a societal policy in the sense that it's about foreign policy, it's about economic policy, it's about uh, even gender policy or uh, policy of education. This is, uh, we have to think as environmental politicians about such things, otherwise we won't get acceptance and we get a lot of conflicts uh, around environmental policy making because even in Germany it's very, very difficult still to get through with environmental ideas. Um, there are always reasons uh, to say, well, let's make that if we are more happy and more wealthier and, uh, and more set up with all the migrant problem or other problems. So I think this is uh, one of the main uh, thesis in this um, in this environmental program. Uh, some of the main topics are listed down, but this program is um, then going into five topics and defining for nearly everything the environmental ministry is doing at the moment, the uh, goals for 2030 and how to link these goals uh, or these targets between each other, because we have, for example huge problems with renewable energy policy as an environmental policy and at the same time nature conservation policy because uh, you know we are a very uh, dense populated country and every of these actions is uh, um, uh, making effects on the other side. So um, we want to strengthen therefore environmental policy. We are going into economic and finance policy this exactly this week there's a big conference in Frankfurt with bankers on sustainability uh, because they are interested in that they know that this is at the end it's an economic principle only sustainable com companies will keep their capital and make some uh, profit um, we try to make our policies to reduce our environmental footstep uh, um, and uh, a footprint, not footstep, and um, we also thought very intensively about new mesh, how to measure wealth in, a, in another way than by normal GDP, which is not reflecting all the environmental costs or other social costs. So this is something to do because this is the mental 
a German sociologist talks about the mental infrastructure. If you think always in GDP measurement, you won't get into some other policy uh, directions. So this is uh, about that. And the last point about science, if I may. Um, I don't know well about the UK uh, research policy, but uh, in, in Germany you, you can say that there's a lot of money put into research. Uh, I know also by Frederike that uh, the, the dialogue and the communication between these two countries in research policy and programs is not very well established. I don't know why, it's a shame, but uh, Germany does a lot. It's also on sustainability research. There's a program called FONA research for sustainability, which has for the next four years two billions of euro uh, put into the research only in this direction. Uh, we have very good studies from our uh, scientific committees on transformation like uh, the WBGU on, on trans transformative policy, transformative research, now a new one on the power of cities, which is a wonderful study on, on urban development worldwide. Uh, Myself, I set up a study on policy-relevant sustainability research, so what are criteria for good research and good policy consultancy. This is all available, and the, the Ministry for Research, of course, is also part of the sustainability strategy. Uh, but still, a lot of people in the world don't know about that. Still, science is uh, a specific sector in Germany, not, not very well communicating with policy not has not too m too much influence i would say compared to the to the huge resources and huge institutions uh, it has so uh, in the new german sustainability strategy the government had the idea to install a so called um, science platform sustainability 2030 to to give a new impulse for collecting scientific knowledge to orient scientists toward the actual, uh, the, the ongoing policy uh, dialogues and conflicts where we need scientific uh, knowledge and consulting. And so this sustainability platform was created in, in, in May this year, so it's just starting. And I think this is interesting also for perhaps the UK situation to get into touch with this uh, platform and we would like even to, to reach out to international uh, scientific networks because I think it's absolutely necessary that science is, let's say, more effective, more powerful, sometimes also more quick in going to policy and to society. And in so far, this element in the, in the German sustainability uh, architecture is something interesting. And the institute I'm at the moment working in is uh, has the, um, the the office for this platform and is trying to set up next year different dialogues and different scoping papers on the most urgent uh, and pressing uh, questions in the from the German perspective. So it's oriented toward the German sustainability strategy, but it has an international um, view. So if you are interested in that. Uh, I think uh, in some weeks and months there will be more uh, in the internet to see about. Uh, we are just producing now our first paper, which is a, a general commitment and a statement towards sustainability uh, policy in Germany and science policy in Germany concerning sustainability. So, well, a conclusion um, is difficult to draw upon all these things, but I think especially for s if, if, you, if you see all this material, in my view, for science, this means that there are some really interesting research questions to be dealt with. And uh, as I mentioned, the international, for example, the, inter the international question of policy, uh, how to measure that, how to communicate that, how to integrate that into ministries and policy making is uh, is an open question. Uh, <coughs> my, my special field is a little bit in this year uh, how to organize the environmental ministry along the idea of an agenda 2030, which is which which means a reorganization and which will not be possible f from the scratch. But uh, I think it's worth to think about how should we deal in government with such complex 
in problems. Then I see the education, especially in Germany, still as a big problem that we don't educate in science in the universities uh, enough people enough in systemic risk thinking, in international thinking, in all these things. Uh, we don't teach enough and we don't have competences enough in policy science interaction. So a normal scientist does, does not learn in Germany at least how to interact with practical people uh, in, in other ways than sending them a paper, which, which happens sometimes that our ministry gets, our minister gets a paper from a scientist directly asking, well, that's, that's the way to go. And this is not working anymore. Um, as I learned yesterday, Oxford University gets every day 1,000 publications on the table. Uh, that's not the rate in the ministry, but uh, you can imagine how many papers from everywhere we get. So this is not this is not working. And of course, the cooperation between the disciplines, the cooperation between universities, the cooperation between consulting institutions and pure research institutions, I think, is a very still a very relevant thing to do. Seeing the time pressure we have, seeing the planetary pressure we have, seeing the, the conflicts coming up with democracy. Um, so I think these are all yeah, big demands uh, for you and our community. So thanks a lot for listening and that's it. Dr. Riz, uh, I must admit that before coming here, I didn't really have a clue what was the Agenda 2030, so I was like, what is this? So my question is, uh, what are the areas of success you have? Because you mentioned that since 2002, you already started the strategies in your country. So what are the areas of success in regards to the five Ps, the peace, prosperity, partnership, yeah. Uh, the area of success and how did you actually from the policy how did you translate the policy to inform society and how did you know how does society I'm more I'm more like of a housewife like what are the practical things if there is an yeah. agenda what action line of action I can do because you know I'm not very very scientific at, at this time so I, I'm just wondering yeah. There are so many policy. Are the, uh, the German society, were they just embracing this policy? How did you implement and how did you, did, there was, was there a reward? Was there a punishment if they don't actually uh, obey with it? Like, yeah. like, like, you know, in Switzerland, if you don't uh, properly dispose your garbage, you get fined, yeah? yeah. I mean, in just in the garbage, but you're talking about really the yeah. big policy about probably nitrogen, food consumption, or. Yeah. Anything. So I just, I don't know, maybe my question probably is so broad. So. Uh, it's very broad, but I <laughs> try to answer, first of all, briefly. I, I think one thing is to know that the sustainability strategy is really something like a meta strategy for policy. So it's not the strategy and every ministry is now thinking about how, what to do and uh, how to communicate with citizens, how to communicate with companies. But it's more that uh, a lot of, of course, strategies and programs are running, and the, st the sustainability strategy is is uh, try to to make the linkages, especially in the national government, to say, well, it makes no sense if the interior ministry is doing this, and the family ministry is doing that, and the environment doing that, and this is all uh, giving uh, different impulses to a household or different impulses to a company. This, sh this should be more consistent. And in so far, the sustainability, sustainability strategy is, first of all, a, a strategy for the government itself. It's a, it's a quality, let's say, a quality control. Every law in Germany has now to be <coughs> approved against the sustainability strategy. Before the parliament can decide upon a law, it has to look up the 17 goals and the 60 let's say the 60 indicators and thinking about is this law in conflict or helping up not only the, the sector where it was original pur purpose for but it's also the side effect thought about and if not it goes back to the ministry and the minister has to think about this law again so this is the idle type so this is a, a way of quality control 
And therefore, it's not, it's not the main task of this strategy to be directly communicated and installed upon a single household. This is made by en environmental policy, for example. It's made by the en environmental ministry, the environmental ministry in the federal state, the environmental policy in the cities on the cities level, and so on and so forth. But what we like to do is to inform citizens that such a strategy exists uh, and that they can go to parliamentarians and say, uh, why did you make up this law if there is a strategy which says this law has to be uh, not in conflict with another law? <coughs> so this is some reference point also for citizens. But this is difficult to communicate. Yeah? Yeah. I Another question? Shorter question, unless you're really good at making cakes, you'll have to ask slightly shorter questions. <laughs> Far away. Um, so you mentioned taking the into account the impact internationally Germany has, and I was wondering if that the SDGs are being incorporated into foreign aid, and if that's impacting the projects that are being taken. Yeah. Uh, the the foreign aid, which is organized in the in the national government by by our um, Ministry for International Cooperation and Development. They had a very strong role in the agenda debate. Together with the minor ministry, we were the lead ministries to debate it. And they are, of course, interested in taking that up for making them their own policy more relevant in the ministerial context. So they liked it very much. They put in a lot of new goals into our national strategy, saying, well, we have to look for the international side. For example, they try to install something on international gender equality effects of German policy, measuring that by some programs they are financing. And the other ministries, and we said, because the environmental ministry is, um, in, a, in a way, the quality controller for all indicators, we said, this is a, a, a pure input indicator. You don't know what comes out if you put one billion into gender quality policy programs in Africa. Maybe that it doesn't change any, any one situation. Uh, so this is difficult because they are just spending money. But we are thinking about that. That's the one thing. And the ministry totally changed the structure. They had a structural reorganization in the midst of the legislature to think about how to install the SDGs and the programs along our organization. So this is now coming to an end because we have no, we had elections. We'll see what's coming up. But this is a main effect on this ministry. And they are the, uh, even this ministry is plastered with these uh, symbols saying, we are more or less as a ministry responsible for every of the 17 goals because every of the 17 is international policy. So this is a change in mind. Uh, but when it comes to the details, it's often difficult how to, yeah, for example, how to create a target on international gender equality policy by Germany, how to, how to measure that, how to, yeah. But we have now a corruption indicator, for example, we never had before, which all, and also about weapon, uh, illegal weapon exports from Germany, we have an indicator for that, measuring, measuring something which is illegal, I mean, very difficult to get numbers. Uh, for that. So, I think it's interesting. Next question, at the back. I'm just wondering what are the major energy-related targets embedded in the new policy? Yeah, they are. They, they have ever been. Energy policy is a, a main part in the sustainability strategy and it's, it was all taken up in the, in the renewed strategy. Something so. on the top of your head, like percentage of uh, penetration of renewables, or yeah. um, anything, anything specific that uh, you can disclose? Yeah, it's. Um, I just I have to look it up, but I think there are three energy targets in the strategy. Of the 60 are three of energy. This one is the uh, percentage of renewables in the power uh, uh, sector. Second is, of course, on, on emissions, CO2 emissions. Third one, I have to, just to look it up. But uh, this is a strong sector, always. But this is not new. Uh, and there was not, more or less nothing changed. But we have, of course, now a new climate action program until 2050. And the goals of this program were taken up in the sustainability strategy because it's a very long-term strategy, one of the 
one of the few long-term strategies in Germany we do have. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you spoke about the Manchester situation earlier, and I was wondering if you know if um, there are any new food production strategies in place or thinking about in Germany? Production strategies? Food, food production strategies? Food production. That address the nitrogen problem. Um, not, not referring to these, let's say, new nitrogen numbers, but there, there is a, one of the most intense debates, I think, in the last one or two years in Germany is about food production and uh, a lot of bad nutrition we have, although we spend a lot of money into uh, the EU agrar policy and the, also the national one. And, um, we have a goal in the strategy talking about a specific percentage of um, ecological farming, which comes from the old times of the green, when we had a green agrarian minister, and the, the ministers after after there, uh, th this time, were always very reluctant to follow and to take up this goal again, but it's still in the strategy. But this is a very slow movement towards more ecological farming in Germany. We, pr we get a lot of ecological food because the German consumer is changing, is the, the, mo the mode is in sh changing, and we import a lot from Eastern Europe of, of uh, ecological farming. So we could do much more, but all the political subsidies for uh, fostering this sector have been more or less cut down, and we are now debating about uh, reform of EU um, agri po agri policy, which is of course very difficult because we have to make compromises. But new techniques, I would say there is research on that, but less to less. There are no subsidies on that. Uh, but a big player, an interesting player, for example, is the water um, water industry, which gives a lot of money and a lot of political alliance to uh, nitrogen low production and they are inventing a lot of interesting uh, defaults and, and, and little systems but it's not the big it's not the big change the, the, the main thing is the market the demand is there the, the German demand the supply is coming from abroad which is not something bad but we could do much more on ecological farming in Germany reducing then nitrogen phosphorus and other um, emissions coming from this sector. And they are under pressure. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next three to four years to this farming sector. Yeah. Yes, um, you said um, that Germany may not be seen as really so efficient because a lot of the <coughs> Jews still import a lot of things from African and Asian countries and they are then being placed under pressure by international bodies. Yeah. Are there any steps taken to reduce this sort of negative international effect? Um, the first thing is that it's something like um, a political insight that we have to do more on that. And uh, what is happening is, of course, on the political side, we are are uh, trying to set up um, climate alliances, resource alliances, biodiversity alliances with different countries in the world and helping them. Uh, and I think there is some, um, this is more, more on markets and innovations, where there will be perhaps seen some success. I'm not sure about that. What, but that this is going on. And what is also interesting is that a lot of companies are engaged in setting up standards for international trade and for keeping their standards also in the production if they are producing in third world countries. Uh, this is, I would say, for example, in this, what I mentioned, this chemistry initiative. This is one of their big uh, goals and they are, in Germany, you have the big chemistry international players, BISF and Bayer and all that. They are really interested in that, but they, uh, have the problem, um, that's what they tell policy, tell, tell policy, to quantify the effects. So, for example, BISF, or was it Bayer, I'm not sure, they have around 800,000 products. And these, every of these products has about a, a value chain of about 50 to 100 different countries and companies. 
So to find out what is happening in one value, value chain about coming these products about whole the globe and then about 800,000 products, it's of course something for the next 50 years to do in this, uh, in this company. Uh, but uh, they are dealing with that and what is also interesting is that the financial market is interested in that to, to, to finance uh, more sustainable value chains. Uh, but you don't see the effects at the moment, I would say. This is something which yeah, will last. Yeah. Just a very quick question. Who's monitoring the reporting? The statistical office, the German uh, national statistical office. Even for the SDGs? For the SDGs, yeah. For they have they have the data for nearly every of these targets. In some some for some of these targets they have to go to institutions like, for example, the sustainable consumption. They need um, data from, the, from a big uh, national consumer association, which has the data on w which products are sold and, and bought. But it's in 90%, I would say, it's the statistical office. And they prove everything. So this is also a report by the statistical office. And it's their most demanded report of all their publications they have, the National Sustainability Indicator Report. So a small leaflet. Um, yeah, and they do it. Uh, last question. Um, I was wondering to what extent has Germany's exit out of nuclear redefined um, your sustainability strategy? Because obviously there was a pullback on coal um, and dirty energy sources. How, how has this changed your trajectory, goals, targets, and strategies? Well, the, um, the decision of the nuclear phase out was done in 2011. So it it didn't um, it didn't rely or refer to the new sustainability strategy and even not anymore to the negotiations around Agenda 2030. This was more or less done. What the effect? And so I I don't know um, whether you find anything about in the strategy about nuclear energy in, besides the notion. Well, we have a, a plan for phasing out the different power plants in the next. Uh, in the next five years, four years, until 2021. Um, so, uh, but the, the real effect is, of course, as you mentioned, that we have problems now with, uh, as we don't have enough um, a grid for a renewable energy grid potential, and we don't have enough uh, uh, Speicher, I always forget the name. Storage. Storage. Um, we have problems in putting enough renewable energy into the system and uh, the old coal uh, industry uh, tries to, to stay uh, with their brown coal and, and their um, lignite coal into the market. So we have a, a raising in, in coal emissions. And of course, this is a problem for our goal on uh, emissions in the, in the strategy and also for the percentage of renewables. Uh, this is still increasing, but it's not increasing enough along the national goals we do have. So this is the effect of phasing out of nuclear energy, and the, en the energy turn is not quick enough. We have a lot of blockings concerning different stakeholders, consumers which fear of ho high prices, uh, lender who don't want to install huge installations uh, to... to um, uh, lines for new renewable energy across Germany. So this is uh, the big problem. And, the, and of course the, the emission trading system is, is on a very bad, in a very bad situation. So it doesn't help anything for fostering uh, the market demand. So this is a problem for the, um, for the strategy. But this is, as I mentioned, this is also always the second effect. The first effect is on the energy policy of the government and of the ministry. And because this strategy is part or is reported also in the sustainability strategy on an international level, we have also a bad image because we don't, uh, we don't reach our uh, goals, which we, which we set. And, and this in a sustainability context where we say, uh, yeah, this is a bad image, even in the environmental policy setting, internationally, but in sustainability, 
well, uh, it gets the image for Germany. Uh, at the end, you are not able to to make a balance between environmental and social goals, for example. So it's, it seems that you, if, if people really have to pay for renewables, if they really have to pay for more energy efficiency, your policy is not working. So, and this is, uh, well, you have to defend these developments on an international uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this is also, I mean, universities 